shouldn't that YYY search pattern be the representation of an IP address? Or do I get the relationship between YYY and the second uh, syntax point wrong in the new text? I yeah, I, I may actually need um, to, to go back and look at this text because if, if if it doesn't actually say XXXX or YYYY, that text will need to be corrected. Because I think one of the suggestions was, um, yeah, see, it, you know, notice where it says uh, name server search pattern, IP address search pattern. I, I need to make sure that that's actually accurate, Alex. Yeah. yeah. I, I just was, uh, it, it, it did strike me that both of them actually describe letter digit hyphen format uh, rather than an IP address format for the second one. Yes. That's it. Anything else? Uh, let me see. There's nobody raising their hand, so I'll put up your next presentation. Let me get the 8283 bis. Up. And okay, then. thank you, Antoine. Two, All right, so yeah, presentation number two. Similar approach with respect to RFC 7483, uh, which is the JSON response document. All right, so now, now this one actually had a little bit more to look at. Uh, most of what we saw in 7482 were actually uh, either errata or stuff that came up on list. 7483 has been one of the places where we've had a little bit more discussion and commentary around you know, what, what actually goes into a JSON response. But purpose and approach, exactly the same. Let's skip over these. Um, so this, this is a little bit more complicated in some sense. So let's just focus on the change here. This is the description of a handle. And if you look, the, the suggestion here is to simply note that a handle says here that this value is a simple string, period. OK, on uh, slide number four here. The definition of an identifier, again, noting that it is a string. Number three. All right, so now this actually has come up in a, co a couple of places. It turns out that in the formatting of the RFC itself, a number of Unicode characters got mangled. Uh, and this may be, you know, due to a limitation in XML to RFC. It may be something that, you know, uh, the authors screwed up in terms of what we actually submitted to the RFC editor. Um, but it turns out that there have been some changes to XML to RFC, and we have a much better way of ensuring that when you're trying to represent Unicode characters, you can actually do it correctly. So uh, the gist of this particular change proposal is that every place there's supposed to be a Unicode character represented that there actually is one. All right, change number four. You'll notice on the left, we've described an IPv4 address as IP version V6. Uh, not quite, that needs to be fixed, should be V4. Change number five. Uh, right, uh, the definition of a country is not the name of a two-character country code. It is a string containing the two-character country code. So another necessary correction. And we're dead. Oh, all right, that's the end of that slide. Any questions or comments on that? Okay. I don't see anybody raising their hands. Uh, did, did you have more slides, Dan Scott? I, I, no, no, no okay. Not, okay. not on this one, Antoine. <laughs> and, and one of the reasons was um, I, I had stopped editing this document at a time when we were trying to put the kibosh on changes getting ready for IETF 107. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, and so there have been some additional comments received on list that I've queued up for discussion and resolution after we had this particular presentation. So I, I, I know Jazz Deep gave me some, Mario gave me some, Patrick gave me some. 
And, and so now we, once we get past this, uh, the next step will be go back, triage those comments, uh, queue up anything for discussion that needs to be queued up. And if there's anything there that we identify as something that looks like as a, a real protocol issue, I'll capture those on the working group wiki and we'll simply park those there for now and eventually maybe think about you know, how we deal with those in the context of protocol evolution. Okay, and that's everything I had for now. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Nobody with questions for the 83-bis document? Okay. So I have a question. Okay, go ahead, Jim. Um, yeah, I, I, I think you answered this, Scott, in, in the end of your, the very end there, but I wanted to call it out more specifically and, and precisely. Um, I'm assuming that uh, what's really going on here is is we have to decide, or I guess this working group gets to have a point of view and then make a proposal about evolving these particular RDAP standards. Um, and you know, do we get ownership of that? And then do these documents become uh, you know the path forward, and does it belong to this working group? So that might be a discussion that has to that will ultimately have to happen with with the area director. I wanted to call out more explicitly exactly what was going on there when you said we'll have to decide going forward. I think that's what you mean. These are standards track documents. These are technical changes. Uh, you know, there's there's some formality to uh, what it takes to move those forward. Did, did you mean something other than that, or did you want to add to what I was just saying there? Thanks. Uh, yeah, Scott Holland back again. Uh, no, I think you've got it there, Jim. I mean, I would, let me just push back on one thing though. Technical changes. As I said, we're, we're trying to ensure that we don't do anything here that ultimately requires software changes unless, you know, w while you've implemented something, you've misinterpreted the text or, you know, otherwise made some assumption that is somehow at odds with what we think the original intent of the document was. But ultimately, when we're done, we're still talking about RDAP level zero, okay? Um, these are individual submissions for now. Uh, I, I might ask Barry, you know, for his opinion on whether or not the working group would have to get involved for documents that aren't proposing any protocol changes. You know, they're, they're ho hopefully going to be limited to just clarifications and corrections, and whether or not those would need to be adopted by the working group in order to advance the documents down the standards track. I know that in the case of like the security considerations document for which we have no captured errata, and no known deficiencies. When we talked about this at the last face-to-face, -face, Barry's suggestion was that you know, we could simply go into the data tracker and submit a request for a status change, and that would not necessarily require development of an interdict draft and working it through the working group process. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Okay, thank you. I, I don't know if Barry wants to say anything. He's certainly welcome to if he'd like, or you know, we can just take this to the list and tour for the next meeting. I just wanted clarity there. Thank you. Okay, I see Jim Reed has a question. Jim, go ahead. So what's Antoine? Just a very quick one. What's the sort of time scale table for the updates of these documents? What's the next steps and when they will like to happen? Um, Scott Hollenbeck. Jim, when you say update of these documents, do you mean the drafts or the RFCs? So, sorry, Scott, the drafts that you've got for, for 742 BIS and 743 BIS. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. So, so that's... Drafts or, or what? Sure. Yeah, so, so my intention is to start working on those again, you know, going through the, the notes that I've captured on list for, we have, for which we have some other corrections, and hopefully... Uh, you know, re getting those, paying attention to that feedback, getting some on-list discussion started, and then updating the documents as we resolve the comments received. So over the course of the next couple of weeks, I will expect to update both of those drafts. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Okay, I don't see any other questions. So thank you, Scott, and also for, thank you for the extensive work. And we will move on to the next speaker, which will be Joseph Yi. Let me give yes. you control, Joseph, just a minute. Okay, okay, 
presenter, and now you are in control of the slides. Go ahead, Joseph. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we have, uh, well, first of all, the, the speakers slides are the same one as the one we have presented in the last Wednesday's uh, joint set up and, and, um, and the, uh, the, the registrar's meeting. So if you attended the, the last one's um, presentation, this is the same slides and have different energy. And we got some good feedback from this as well. So if I reach a certain slide, I'll mention about the questions, comments that raised for it. Uh, so right now, registries produce different set of reports, and lots of them are familiar. And yet, uh, uh, registrars are the ones who need to deal with lots of the very similar but still technically different reports. Uh, hence, we have uh, <clears throat> the bias of the best process of domains, uh, uh, different registries, and uh, registrars wanting to uh, uh, make a standard of it so that things become consistent standard that will be effective for both the producers, which is the registry for the reports, and also the consumer registrar side of the uh, making the reports. So this slide just um, showing some examples of what reports produced by whom and how similar or how not similar they are. I just talked about earlier and so the report static is mainly just raw um, text data. And we want it to be standardized so that it will be efficient for everyone. Uh, in order for the report to be standardized, and, and it's not only create the definitions, but also have the two uh, registry in the IANA to get the, the all the definitions there. One for the fields or uh, the columns here. And then the settings is will be similar to the EP extension uh, regist uh, IANA registry. It will be first come, first serve. And, and every column thing has to be properly defined where's the reference and where they use. The next four slides were, were defined in the draft session two about what the fields were there. So I just gonna skip them. Uh, in the draft, it was grouped by the, the, um, the category or the, where they are related, but they were just group pages for easy document management. So um, they could easily be arranged around. And then we also need the second registry for the reports. And again, this will be the one that talks about what the report, what fields in there, and what the reference are there. Uh, we expect them to be ordered. Um, it's also a first compressor, so it means it means that whoever defined the first one just get into the registry. We're not blocking anyone. Um, of course, we need a, a central location so that we stop duplication. And these are samples of the reports and the, the fields that is are related to it and their reference sessions there. Again, this will be um, uh, uh, next to adopt the EP extensions registry like uh, uh, format. It's not yet uh, properly, uh, it's not yet um, completely worked out in the draft right now. So, but uh, um, someone has mentioned in the previous presentations that uh, we are not acknowledged that and we know that we're going to. Um, complete those parts of the writings. Um, there's some baseline work requirement for it. All reports are expected to be CSV, common slides by use. Um, the first line is always about the column headings. Um, the unrecognized column headings for now in the, doc, in the draft phase uh, should be or maybe in uh, There are lots of um, discussions in the previous presentations about how are we going to extend the report or the value of our report? So um, allowing the consumer to ignore fields they don't recognize is one of the way. Um, this is still open. We welcome all kinds of uh, uh, feedback suggestions for, for um, getting this dress. There's another discussion we need, but probably would, probably would not be in the scope for this draft. For the, this is the, the file name. Uh, uh, what names, what element should be there to, to get the, the file name, the report you need, and with given meaningful information, have a sense of what data will be part of it. So that could include the dates, the reports, the TLD info for the report, the name of the report registry, uh, maybe thresholds, 
um, some operation issues like if some large registrars or some large registry has a lot of data, file can, can go quite large. Um, over a gigs of the raw data is not uncommon for, for big registry and registrars. So um, when it grows to such a large size, should we need to see the file or we just never need to be concerned because this is just intense internet bandwidth is actually good enough. And on the publication side, whether we want a flag, uh, uh, or we want a, a some some part some kind of hierarchy for for storing the report. Um, another issue that we need to discuss would be what separate what character we use as a separators. Uh, although comma is common, comma is also needful for some of the fields like uh, and domain status. Um, that's all I have for the slides, and um, love to get more feedback and comments from everyone. And also, would I love to ask the uh, the working group to consider about the adoptions of this document. Thanks, Okay, thank you, Joseph. Does anybody have any questions? I don't see any hands raised yet. Okay, Patrick, go ahead. Uh, thanks. Just a, a quick uh, suggestion or whatever. I don't know. But for the for the fields with multiple values on how to separate them, uh, instead of overloading various characters that can create other problems, like a, a comma can can happen in address, I don't know. There are some characters in, 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 in even in ASCII. Uh, that can be used uh, for that that for which their purpose is exactly to specify field separation and things like that. So I'm talking about the one C uh, character, which is called file separator and things like that. So I, I know that many people won't like it because they are non mutable characters and are not hugely used and hugely known. But I think it, at least for me, it's better than overloading any other character. That's all. That's all I had. Uh, no, Okay, thank you, Patrick. No other questions, then I'll my presenter role and share slide. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you very much. And this also concludes our agenda for this time unless anybody has any other business to discuss. Is there anybody that wants to raise some issues or some questions? I see James. James, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out that we're looking for a document shepherd for the unhandled namespaces draft. Okay. I met James earlier. So please, if there's anybody interested in doing it, I would appreciate it. And we will appreciate it too. And of course, chairs will always help anybody that does this for the first time. And it's a great opportunity to get to know the process and to know the people and the documents too. Okay, if nobody else has anything else, I would like to apologize. Um, we scheduled this meeting thinking that this would be automatically recorded, but Jim and I just after the beginning of the, um, of the session, we concluded that the, the, it was not recording, so probably the first half of this, uh, of this session is not in the recording. So that's completely our fault. Sorry for that. Um, then I want to thank all the presenters. I think everything worked very well, doing this remotely for the first time for everybody. Um, Jim, do you, do you still have Closing remarks to give us by co chair Jim. Sorry, I was uh, shaking my head thinking you would see it, but uh, it's okay. Okay. No, I'll just say thanks to everyone. I, I know that um, I, I'm sure that folks have been, uh, uh, but since I am talking, I, I know that folks are probably bored with 
hearing my voice all the time. And, uh, you know, we, we often um, uh, suffer with not having uh, Antoine with us too often. And so um, it just seemed entirely appropriate to uh, for, for me to be quiet and, <laughs> and let him run through things since I it's talk okay. all the time. But uh, thanks very much to Antoine and, and thanks to all for uh, for going through this. And, and yeah, I guess I'll apologize for not recording too. You know, Antoine and I did meetings several times over here to practice this. We, we actually did. Um, and to make sure that we knew how to work everything, it could make all the parts work the way they should. Next and time. halfway through this thing, we just like, wait a minute, what about recording? <laughs> oh, well, you win some, you lose some. Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll see when, it's the, when the session ends. Okay, then I want to thank everybody and everybody. I wish everybody is still a very good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Uh, uh, Jim and Anton, where would you guys like the notes to go? Uh, just send them to the chairs, yes. Thank you. Got it. Okay. Uh, to regex chairs. And then we'll make sure they get posted to the data tracker. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you also for the Jabber scribe. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. You too. Okay, we're getting down to where it's almost just us. Um, I'm just gonna log off here and see if it lets me go and I'll I'll leave you to end the meeting.